Hello, beautiful friends. I'm Meg of Meg Burton Tudman, and you are in the right place if you are looking for confidence in your own skin. I am so excited to interview my dear friend and colleague, Amber Duggar. Amber is a financial and wellness expert, and she is known for helping her clients find actionable, simple solutions and empowering information that allows them to explore the sweet life with purpose. And I think her zone of genius is especially around making all things money, budgeting, and finance related fun and accessible and, again, truly empowering. So Amber, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to have you on. Um, anything else you want to add about yourself and the work that you're doing these days? Well, thank you so much for having me, Meg. I'm just so thrilled to be here. I love being around your beautiful energy. You're just such an incredible light. Um, I know the, the, in, the introduction was amazing. Um, thank you. I, I work uh, specifically with entrepreneurs in Profit First um, using a software called YNAB. And uh, really what we learn more about is how to break down all the different barriers that we have created for ourselves when it comes to our relationship with money. And so by getting more clarity and understanding around our money, we learn so much about ourselves and realize that, yes, I can actually do this. I believe that each and every person that I come across can be good with money. They just haven't had a, found a system that works for them yet. So I just love what I do and I love all the clients that I work with and I love talking about this subject because I think it's something that we don't tend to talk about openly and freely. So um, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy that you're here. And I think <clears throat> you totally hit it on the head. Money is not a subject that we usually chat openly about. Um, and it's also, I feel like, a subject that is often not included in our overall wellness, which of course, you know, feeling confident, being comfortable in your own skin is all about wellness. Um, and when we don't include money in that conversation, when we exclude money from the table or finances from the table, there is definitely a missing piece. So how do you feel that finances or budgeting fits into or what role does it play in being confident in your own skin? Well, I would say confidence in your own skin, a lot of it has to do with our own inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. So do you agree? Yes, without a doubt. So if you think about your day, you have a hundred units of time. Mm -hmm. And this is taken from someone else. I read it somewhere. I don't know. I cannot remember who it is, but whoever came up with this concept, brilliant. There's a hundred units of time. And my goal is to reduce the amount of units that are spent on what I call contaminated time. Oh, yes. Isn't that amazing? I so, love that. Yeah. So contaminated time when you are thinking about money in a negative way or when you're stressing about money or you're anxious about different aspects of your money, maybe a bill's due and you don't know if you have enough in your account mm -hmm. or when am I getting paid again because I'm not sure if it's going to cover everything that's coming out the next day. You're thinking about these different things or you're thinking about, oh, I shouldn't have bought that. Should I really have bought that because it was great at the time, but now I don't think I really want it anymore. Um, or am I making enough money? Is am I worth this amount of money? Like all these different things that you can be saying to yourself, are my def I define them as contaminated time. Mm -hmm. And when you shift your thoughts from that to more of a karmic flow of money and this beautiful energetic flow that goes in and out like breathing, right. and when you start to think of money as currency currency comes from the word current and current is ever flowing right and this this concept is from a book called the soul of money by lynn twist and when she stated that it just completely blew my mind because money you of course you want to be saving money and accumulating money so that you are able to create this financial freedom for yourself but it also needs to be moving in and out and replacing itself and allowing this flow. And when you think about stagnant water or stagnant energy, it gets contaminated. Right. And so there are so many different ways to look at money, but it's 99% behavioral and emotional. And so it can really tie back to 
our thoughts about ourselves, our thoughts about others, our thought about our actions. And so then we can spend a lot of that time in contaminated thought and instead of it being a beautiful relationship. And so stepping right. into it and starting to recognize what are the things that I think negatively about money and how can I shift those thoughts so that I can start to really free myself to spend those units on things that really bring joy to my soul and joy to others around me. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful process. That's so powerful. I love that idea of contaminated thoughts or contaminated time, all of that. That's huge. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's an awesome thing. I wish it, and you know, I, everyone's thoughts are always someone else's thoughts at some point. But when I came across that, I just was blown away. Like now mm -hmm. I, I, it really helps me with everything else in my day too. Do right. I really want to be spending time on that? I only have a hundred units. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so empowering. So the first step then, if I'm hearing you right, is to acknowledge that, you know, here's where I'm spending my energy, my time. Once you identify that, what's the next step that you encourage your clients to take to create that actual current of money? Hmm, that's a great question. So, well, the first step really is becoming aware of mm -hmm. your situation. And so, yes, it is important to get clarity and understanding. Um, there's a concept where, you know, what's the first thing that you do when you um, want to get out of prison? And everyone says, oh, you need the key, you need the key. <laughs> the first step is knowing you're in prison. Mm. <laughs> so if you don't know you're there, you don't want to leave it. Right. Um, so, so for your situation, just getting clear on where you're at financially and actually opening up the door to looking at it, that is probably the hardest step for anyone to take because right. it's a scary step. Scary. Yep. And so when I do meet with people that are ready to do that, I'm just so amazed by them because there's so much bravery that they're that they have to, to look at this. So yeah. just know that it has to feel right to you and it has, the timing has to be right and ready to look at that. But I can tell you that it is the most amazing experience to then know you're no longer thinking, what, what is it like? What does it look like? You no longer have any of those thoughts. So you can just completely you've just made yourself a huge deposit, right? Because right. now you have all this time that you can spend on something else because you're not worried about that because you already know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. The second step is in identifying, okay, well, am I, am I actually okay? Am I making more money than I'm spending or am I spending more money than I'm making? Right. So once you assess that, then you can start to identify areas because if you're making $20 more than you're spending, Mm -hmm. you're, you're keeping $20 a month. So that over time does accumulate. But if you're spending even $20 more than you're making every single month, you are putting yourself in more and more debt. Right. And that can then create this financial flow of, of constantly feeling like you're at a deficit. Mm -hmm. So knowing whether or not you're spending more than you're making, it's really, you don't need a fancy software. You don't need a whole bunch of spreadsheets. You can really truly just look at the amount of money going in your account, the amount of money going out of your account right. on you know, the last six months. Am I consistently taking out more money than I'm making? Mm -hmm. And of course, this, you have, if you have multiple accounts, you might have to put a couple balances on a piece of paper. But right. um, that's the next step is just seeing, you know, where am I at financially? Mm -hmm. um, and then may, taking small steps. What are some things that you can maybe cancel because you don't, you don't need them anymore? Or what are some, am I, am I going to actually need to change the bigger items? I don't believe in with, withholding yourself from joys that you like. Right. As long as they're truly bringing you joy. And we put our money where our priorities are, but yeah. a lot of times we justify things as a priority when they aren't truly a priority. Mm -hmm. So really being honest with yourself of where do I truly want my money and my energy to flow to? Right. And am I having it flow there? Right. And if not, what changes do I need to make? When you look at trying to figure out what the priorities are, what are some of the questions that you ask your clients to help them figure out, is this truly bringing me joy? And maybe that's one of them, but um, you know, is this truly bringing me joy? Does this really belong 
you know, in my list of either investments or expenses, depending on how you look at it? Well, there's a few things that I ask. The first thing is before we even go into that detail is if money was not of concern, mm. what truly would you want to be spending your time doing and what would you want money to spend on? What are the experiences or things that truly would just make you feel like, yes, I've made it. This is great. I'm doing these things that I love. Right. And it's different for everyone. And there's no judgment on what that is, no. whether it's a Maserati or a lake house or spending two months in India at a yoga retreat. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Um, but it needs to be something that you truly feel like, man, that would be amazing. That brings so much joy to my soul mm -hmm. and not allowing any thoughts of, but that would never happen. Right. And that's the hardest part. And yeah. even when I first did this exercise, I remember it was in a mastermind with a bunch of health coaches and I had so much emotion tied around money and making money and feeling guilty about making money and wanting to remain uh, quite humble when it came to spending any money. That was a, a whole bunch of my story and it came from my own parents mm -hmm. and really feeling gross writing this out. Like, oh, I don't think I can, I don't want fancy shoes. I don't want fancy purse. And a lot of people, you know, that was the example I was given was like, oh, you can get a new Kate Spade purse and all this. And I'm like, I don't care about Kate. Although if I had to choose one, I, that's why I mention it because I don't know anything about designer purses, but I do love Kate Spade purses. <laughs> um, I like the polka dots. I know it's so awful. <laughs> um, but in general, it's you can already see the the feelings that may be coming up just by going through that process. So just mm -hmm. talking a person through that process and allowing them to give themselves grace. Like, it's okay. Just really truly let go of any other thoughts right. and just write what you'd really want. So that's right. the first thing. The second thing is um, I'm I'm losing my train of thoughts. Let me think for a second. So it's looking at the big picture. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, that's what you were asking about specific expenses. So I actually had a client just yesterday. One of the things she had was storage. And so she was spending, I think, $120 a month. And so I asked her, are the items in that storage unit worth owning for, you know, $1,400 a year? Right. Are they worth paying $1,400 a year for the actual privilege of owning those items she said i never really thought about it like that so i don't know i mean because then she's thinking i could probably sell most of that stuff and then i could actually be saving myself 1400 a year that's a really specific example but right. um if you're looking if you do own your own business looking to see the more as uh investments um so if if you're spending something on your business and it's not giving you a specific return, then it's something that you may want to rethink. Is this something that I really need if it's not really giving me a return? Right. Not every expense will be able to do that um, monetarily. You know, if you have certain things that are just required like hosting, but then you can think of it as, okay, but the hosting allows me to have my web page, which allows me to have the platform to be able to get clients and that type of thing. So you can still look at it from that perspective. So it's right. just being really clear about, is this important? And do I want to continue to sh send signals out to the universe that it is important by spending money on it? Right, right. It's getting clear on your why. I mean, we talk about that, you know, from a mindset standpoint, which I think there's a lot of mindset and money, um, you know, overlap. But um, you know, what's the rationale? What's the, the reason behind it? And if there isn't one, then especially with money, is there a better way to spend that? Is there a better way to invest it? Um, is there something else you could be using that kind of currency for? Right, right. And, and where you put your money is where you're showing this is my priority. Right. And I think really questioning are questioning yourself before you spend and asking yourself, is this something I want to be very clear that this is a priority to me? Right. Because other things will happen as well. So if you make space for 
let's say you want something, you want to be spontaneously generous. Mm -hmm. Well, if you create space for that and intentional cash is going to spontaneous generosity, mm -hmm. then you're able to do that without even questioning it because you feel good. You've already planned for it. You know that that's something you want to do and you want to be spontaneously generous. Right. At the same time, if you're spending money on, you know, things that maybe are giving you immediate benefit, but then are actually leaving you empty inside mm -hmm. and you're feeling like this actually will make me feel bad in the next day or two. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, do you really, does future you want to be in that position? Do you want to put yourself in that position? Right. And do I want to be sending signals that this is what I want in my life is to feel this way later? Yeah. And you save yourself money, save yourself that awful feeling and feel confident and empowered that I made a, cho a choice to say, this is not important to me. Mm -hmm. There are other things that are more important. Right. Right. Oh, I love that so much. And the, the match between um, the two. Um, what would you say, obviously without giving away any confidential information, but what would you say is the biggest struggle that most of your clients are coming up against? What's the biggest hurdle as they try to put financial systems in place, as they start to try to get clear on what system will work best for them and where they are with everything financially? What's the biggest hurdle for them? Well, I think that in general, the biggest hurdle is the lack of understanding and the lack of clarity around their money. Mm -hmm. And because we as a society don't focus very much on educating ourselves on this, it's something where we feel like we're supposed to just know. We're, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's kind of the attitude. Oh, you figure it out, you know? And unfortunately, unless you grew up in an environment where that was a focus at home, or you are just individually really interested about learning it on your own, mm -hmm. most people are coming into the world really not knowing how to do it. They have some bit of guilt and anxiety around it. Right. They don't really feel comfortable talking about it. and most of the time when we think of money and talking about money, we think, oh, we have to have a lot of it to really even talk about it. And if we don't have a lot of it, where am I supposed to go? And then you think if you do have money, it's this gray suit, sterile office, this guy like sitting there you know, <laughs> intimidating. And then you're thinking, well, just why am I even like, I just can't do anything about this. Like they just feel stuck. They feel right. like they can't move forward and they're inadequate because of it. Right. And that is my mission because I know a hundred percent, no one, no one deserves to feel that way right. because it's simply not true. Right. And we do have some amazing resources and there are things that everyone can do to empower themselves about money. Mm -hmm. So I would say the biggest hurdle is just realizing that they actually can do something about this and that they are right. able and they are good with the numbers. Every single person walks around with a calculator. Right. That's all you need. Right. I mean, you don't even need to do any math. <laughs> you know? If you're making $100 and you spend $110, you're going to see a negative number there and you know that that's not good. And if you're spending $100 and it's $99, then you still have a dollar left, so you're okay. Right. You're good. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, of course, that's a simplistic version. But it, it really is, we make it so complicated for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And unnecessarily having, so right and having yeah. a simple system where you can actually organize your money mm -hmm. is life-changing yeah and and that's you know back in the 60s and earlier we were a cash-based society right so i, I want to if you don't mind i want to explain a little bit why we're in this situation and why we feel so uncomfortable with money yeah. at this point and it's because we've complicated everything we used to have to do everything by cash, right? Mm -hmm. So there were systems in place that were really simple. You had envelopes, and, and that envelope system allowed your grandmother or your great-grandmother to make sure she had enough money for rent. So when she would get paid, she would say, okay, I am reserving $400 for rent or for my mortgage because I want to make sure that we have enough so we're not kicked out. Right. right? Just real. Right. <laughs> real consequences. When you had money for food, that went in a different envelope. So then you would go to the grocery store with that envelope. And if you didn't have enough money in that envelope, you just simply didn't buy it. 
Mm -hmm. We now are so overwhelmed with choice. We're so overwhelmed with all these things that we don't really need and sales and marketing techniques and, you know, neuro-linguistic programming that are going into these different advertisements. And so we have to now deal with a whole bunch of additional detail. And on top of that, we have a card. And so that card doesn't show us how much money we have, right. doesn't show us how much we have reserved just set aside for certain things. And no worries. If you don't have enough money in that bank account, you can use this other card and then you can just pay it later. No problem at all. And it's become such a normal thing right. that we now are in this mess of just a whole bunch of different cards with different balances. It makes us feel overwhelmed when 50 years ago, we were dealing with a very simple pile of money mm -hmm. that we then used. Right. And so bringing it back to that simple pile of money while still using cards is such an eye-opening experience and it's yeah. empowering and you can see, wow, the value of a dollar still is the value of a dollar. Right. And I'm going to organize my money now so that I can see where it's going and I can actually have enough money for these different things that I want right. because I've, I've intentionally given it all purpose. Right. And, and so it's, there's nothing wrong with any of us. It's just our entire method of paying for things has changed so dramatically right. that we are now catching up and figuring out a way that still lets us make sense of the money that we have. Right. It requires a mindset shift. And then I think also probably a, a system shift so that you do know what's coming in and what's going out yeah. in a more organized way. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I love that. It's so empowering too. It's exciting. It is exciting. It is. And I think that is a testament to you and the work you do because it can, to your example of, you know, the old man and the, <laughs> the great <laughs> suit in the office, you know, that I think is a lot of people's perception of what it means to manage my finances. And I don't think it has to be that way at all. I think it can be exciting and there's definitely an empowerment piece that's incredible. Um, what is next for you and your business? What's on the horizon for you? Hmm. Well, um, I have been focusing on doing more group work. Nice. So I'm really excited. About, and we're running our second round of Budget Alchemy, which is specifically for entrepreneurs that are looking to get a handle on their money, getting more understanding around their money and improving their relationship with money. And so I focus a lot on personal finance because I believe that's the number one thing that sabotages our business is our personal finance. Right. But then also coming up with a system that allows us to know exactly what we're going to do with the money that comes in mm -hmm. and it just be a simple thing. You know, okay, I get $100, all right, certain amounts going to profit, certain amounts going to my business expenses, certain amounts going to taxes, and a certain amounts going to my pay. And we come up with a revenue goal that sustains their specific lifestyle needs. So, you know, every lifestyle is different. Right. I remember when I was first um, becoming a health coach and I was so frustrated because I thought, okay, with this pricing and the amount of money I know I need to make, this is not making any sense, you know? <laughs> and that was just my situation and everyone's situation is different. Right. So making a, a plan and a revenue goal for your specific situation is a life-changing thing. Mm -hmm. Because then all of a sudden you can start putting to work your diffuse method of thinking, which is in the shower, when you're on a walk, when you're in a yoga pose, like, oh, I could be doing this differently or I could be breaking this up and pricing it this way so that I could meet that goal and feel right. confident about the goal because you know that it's gonna sustain you and that you feel comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really my next step is really focusing on getting this out to more people Good. so that there can be this wave of new empowerment around money and saying, yes, I, I can totally do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's phenomenal. And tell our friends who are watching where they can find you to learn more. Well, um, I have a Facebook group called Sweet Life Purposeful Money. Okay. So anyone is welcome to join. Wonderful. Um, my website is my name, Amber Duggar, D-U-G-G-E-R.com. And I'm also on Instagram, Profit with Amber. Same thing with Twitter, Profit with Amber. Perfect. And my Facebook page is also Profit with Amber. Wonderful. <laughs> and I'll include all of those details in the description for this video. Amber, thank you so much. This has been so eye-opening. And I love how 
easy you've made it for people to even just take that first step. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. It was okay. wonderful being here. Thank oh, you for having me. It was my pleasure. And friends who are watching, if you enjoyed this, please like the video. Please subscribe. I would love to have you as part of this community. Thank you so much.